millions of dollars from corn harvests are destroyed by wild boars. It became difficult for Russian people to find ways to deal with this invasive species to protect their corn fields. So in today's video, let's see what new tools Russian farmers have to use to prevent the destruction of wild boars in cornfields in the following video. According to the data from the Russian National Agriculture Center, Russia took third place with 1,193 reports of wild boars last year. The country tops the list with 2,425 reports of wild boars across 253 districts, with the Buryansk region coming in second with 1,377 reported in the past year. This country is in the top five with the largest number of harmful and invasive wild boars in the world. When food and the wild is scarce, they will lead their herds into farm areas to search for food. In 2023, a herd of wild boars destroyed a cornfield at night, causing significant damage. Without the appearance of wild boars, cornfields in Russia still bring in millions of dollars in revenue, making it difficult for agricultural authorities to find ways to limit their destruction. This cornfield was damaged in a very large area. Wild boars often attack at the edge of cornfields without human resistance. They will attack deep inside. They bite off corn plants and eat young corn ears. Every year, hundreds of thousands of acres of corn and other food crops are destroyed by this invasive species. Is your family's cornfield suffering from this invasive species as well? Please comment number one if you are looking for ways to deal with them and keep them off your farm. Russian people are having a headache trying to find ways to deal with wild boars attacking and destroying cornfields, causing heavy damage to the agricultural production. The Russian government passed the agricultural law and also allocated an additional $200 million for this wild boar response project, but the damage is caused every year. To protect their property, Russian farmers use the method of raising hunting dogs. They are intelligent and brave dogs. They have made great contributions in helping farmers protect cornfields and deal with wild boars. The dogs were taken to the place where there were traces of wild boars. As soon as they are released, they scatter everywhere to sniff out the exact location of wild boars. Wild boars are extremely intelligent and sensing impending danger when they hear a dog barking in the distance. They run away from their hiding place. In every hunt, there are usually two types of dogs used, including Doggo Argentina and Mountain Cur. Mountain Cur possesses an extremely sensitive ability. The hunting dog's sense of smell helps hunters quickly find hidden places of wild boars. After discovering the target, they will surround the wild boar and bark to signal the group of hunters to know the location of the invasive species. At this time, the hunting dog that appears will grab the wild boar by its ears and hold it. This prevents the wild boar from shaking its head from side to side and from using its tusks to injure the hunters. Thanks to hunting dogs, hunters can approach and dig down wild boars with hunting tools, thanks to which this hunting method is more effective. 
If you are almost certain to catch a wild boar using hunting dogs, these dogs have been trained and raised with a special diet, so they possess a large amount of energy in their bodies. They can run at a high intensity for a long time, so once they have identified the target, their prey has almost no chance of escaping. But in many cases, hunting dogs can be injured or can lose consciousness during hunts if they encounter large wild boars with sharp teeth. Are you curious about the second method to deal with this giant invader? Comment zero below. Helicopters shoot down wild boars from above. They use all kinds of tools from assault tools to fully automatic submachine guns. And hunters will use an open land that is not an area, residential area, 212 HP helicopter, twin engine utility aircraft. The experience begins before dawn with thorough safety, core covering techniques, and safe hunting gear practices in and around the aircraft. The hunt begins early in the morning with a sunrise takeoff when the wild boar is most active and every hunter is equipped with a semi-automatic AR-15 equipped with a holographic red dot web and unlimited gas portions. And for those who want to upgrade it to the ultimate upgrade for hunting gear. Experienced pilots know exactly where the wild boar is hiding and with air spread and with air speed just a few feet above the ground over more than 300,000 acres of farmland. Chasing the wild boar from above at high speeds is great. I mean, isn't it great? Do you feel uncomfortable when the sound of giant rotating propellers scares the wild boar away from its hiding place? Your wireless headset crackles as the pilot announces over the intercom that fire has been activated. And all hell breaks loose as the sound of hunting gear erupts. Good hunters rarely waste an air pill. Each air pill will hit the target with this great hunting skill helping the hunter kill 70 to 80 wild boars. Hunting wild boars by helicopters not only helps bringing a new type of entertainment to hunters, but it's profitable for businesses and, of course, it also helps farmers reduce headaches caused by invasive species. The final measure is the trap method. Each trap is equipped with a camera system, sensor system, and solar power. The remotely controlled system is powered by the most recent advances in remote camera technology, allowing real-time monitoring of wild boar activity on your phone, tablet, or your computer using mobile data to know if wild boars have entered the trap. Each part of the trap is supported by a forklift which makes it easier to install the trap and simpler traps are usually made from stainless steel to help make the trap sturdy and maintain its longevity among all the trap techniques. After installation, the trapper will sprinkle bait inside the trap to lure wild boars into it. Their favorite grains are fermented rice or wheat corns, and now all remains is to wait for the results. Wild boars often panic when caught in a trap and run back and forth, even throwing themselves into the trap trying to find a way out. They will be bought up by wild boar farms to turn them into high-value food by 2021 estimated at $20.8 billion. Russian people often do not support wild boar hunting for many reasons. One of the main reasons is concern about the natural environment and the ecosystem. 
Wild boars are an important part of the Russian forest ecosystem, and overhunting can cause a significant decline in wild boar numbers and negatively affect the ecological balance. In addition, some people also disagree with hunting because they consider wild boars a part of nature and consider dealing with them a violation of ethics and mortality. Furthermore, in some cases, hunting wild boars can cause dangerous situations for participants when these animals protest or attack the hunter. Therefore, opposition and disapproval of wild boar hunting is common among the Russian population. Comment number one, if you disagree with hunting to deal with wild boars. And comment zero, if your corn farm is being affected by this invasive species. Thank you for watching the entire video. Hit the like button and subscribe now. See you again. Unlike other animals we often encounter, raccoons have quickly become a favorite from North America to Europe, with a large focus on transporting them through various means. Since the early decades of the 19th century, Raccoons were brought into Europe through diverse means of transport. All traders imported these raccoons directly, not only as feet in the wildlife trade, but also because of their rarity and uniqueness. Initially, the raccoon population in Europe numbered only a few hundred animals, but over time, the number increased significantly. The first raccoons imported to Europe were not only rare in quantity, but also an incredible economic value. To put them in an unbelievable price range, raccoons in 1870 cost around $100. The figure equates to around $2,500 today. This is an example of the uniqueness and nobility of this animal, which makes keeping raccoons a challenging hobby and responsibility. Although prices have decreased over time, raccoons are still remaining as an expensive pet, costing around $1,000 in 2023. This increase in price reflects the raccoon's nobility and rarity, and it is not just a pit market problem, but also an incentive to increase conservation efforts. This high cost is not only a factor in educating the public about the value of these species conservation, but also an important source of income to maintain and develop the raccoon sanctuaries. With high fertility and good adaptation to new habitats, raccoons can dominate the competition where they live. Another problem is the potential spread of infectious diseases. Raccoons can carry diseases such as rabies, anthrax, and leptospirosis, posing a risk to both native animals and humans. This increases the risk to the health of the environment and the community. In cities, invasive raccoons can create a variety of problems, including damaging homes, stealing food from pets, and polluting the environment through noise and uncontrolled movement. When checking the roofs of people's houses, 
they will be found hiding inside the roof. What if your area had raccoons around? Would that be a trouble or something blessing? Raccoon traps appeared in the 19th century, invented by farmers in Europe faced with the problem of rapidly growing raccoon populations, causing damage to crops and livestock. They needed an effective solution. The price of the cage ranges from $50 to $100, depending on size, material, and features. Traps help capture raccoons effectively and humanly, reducing damage to crops and livestock, reduce the risk of disease spread from raccoons to people and other animals as well. Raccoon traps are not only a personal solution, but are also widely used by governments and NGOs across Europe. Place traps in areas where raccoons frequent, such as near food and water sources. Check the trap cage regularly to release raccoons immediately after they are caught. With raccoon traps, Europe has found a comprehensive solution to minimize the negative impact of raccoon populations, while protecting farmers and their habitat. In addition to using raccoon traps, European farmers have used hunting as an effective way to deal with raccoon populations. Hunting mainly takes place at night, humanizing the nocturnal insects of this animal. Raccoons possess good eyesight in the dark, suitable for hunting at night to avoid human attention. The method of hunting raccoons has been used in Europe for a long time, even before the invention of trapping raccoons. As of now, regulations regarding raccoon hunting licenses vary depending on the country. While in some other countries, hunting can be carried out without a license. In others, it requires participants to obtain a permit from the authorities. According to a study by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, hunting has significantly reduced raccoon populations in Europe. Over the past 50 years, this population has decreased by 30%. This is an important step forward in maintaining the balance between wildlife populations and the natural biosphere. Europe is famous not only for its natural beauty, but also for its unique wildlife reserves. This reserve is not only the largest in Europe, but is also home to about 100 raccoons. With an area exceeding 1,000 square kilometers, Hoke Kimpen ensures the provision of natural habitat and the protection of raccoons. With an area of more than 600 square kilometers, is home to 50 raccoons and that is the Luna Burger Haida. This place is not only a natural habitat for raccoons, but also an ideal destination for nature lovers. The first person responsible for bringing raccoons into protected areas in Europe was the International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, in 1979. With the Raccoon Rescue Program, IUCN has transferred hundreds of raccoons into protected areas, laying the foundation for species conservation and recovery.
Raccoon sanctuaries in Europe not only provides a safe haven for these animals, but also an important role in species conservation. They create a safe, stable living environment, helping raccoons reproduce and grow naturally. Do you think that these species should continue to develop as pets? We will go to the next area to see how do farmers in other areas control invasive species. Let's keep watching. Wild boars. They are invasive animals that are believed to have arrived from Europe in the 16th century. It has become the greatest environmental and economic threat in the United States. On top of that, North Carolina's wild boar population has seen significant growth, creating a unique challenge for communities and state governments. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, referred to as the USFWS, feral pigs in North Carolina will reach about 2 million by 2024 accounting for 10% of the total wild boar population in the United States. Indeed, this is an impressive number, making the state one of the largest wild boar populations in the country. The sudden growth of feral swine in North Carolina has not only created a robust breeding market, but also has had significant environmental and economic consequences for the state. Their destruction of trees, crops, and other assets has created an emergency situation, requiring drastic community intervention. According to the USFWS estimates, North Carolina not only ranks first in feral hog numbers, but is also one of the state's hardest hit by their negative impacts. Detailed data shows that North Carolina accounts for 10% of the total wild boar population in the U.S., surpassing rivals such as Texas, Georgia, Tennessee, Missouri, and Arkansas. However, not only is the number huge, but the harmful effects of the wild boar population also spread to many different areas. They not only damage the environment, but also threaten community health. The wild boars are a source of dangerous diseases for humans and the livestock, creating a medical emergency. People in North Carolina faced with those negative consequences had to take extreme countermeasures. Trapping and hunting have become the main solutions to control and reduce wild boar populations. These measures are not only a temporary solution, but also an important step to protect the living environment and ensure social security. North Carolina. You all know that this is a beautiful place with its rolling hills, mountains, and flat lands. Picture this, the Blue Ridge and Great Smoky Mountains weaving through the state, creating a stunning canvas of nature's art. Now, let me take you on a little journey to the land of North Carolina where wild hogs roam freely in the hills and valleys. So these wild hogs, also known as boars, are quite the adaptable creatures. They love hanging out in hilly areas, you know, where there are lots of trees and goodies to munch on. And of course, they're not also as far away from water sources, like a river or a stream. We all need a little hydration sometimes, right?
Now let's talk about the new folks down in North Carolina who have been handling these wild hogs. The farmers. I've got some real tricks up their sleeves traps. Well, y'all know that they all use all sorts of traps, from snap traps to hook traps and mesh traps. But if you want to know the real deal, this will be the snap trap. It's like a bear hug for the hog, but in a steel door kind of way. Ain't that smart? But hold your horses. We've also got some high tech stuff going on as well. Now let me break down the hog catching process for y'all. First, farmers scout out the perfect spot where lots of hog footprints, you know. Then they set up the trap in a spot where these hogs like to hang out. It is like setting the stage for a hog party. Next up, they throw in some bait. We're talking corn, potatoes, or maybe some tasty berries. Something that will make those hogs go. Oh, what's this delicious surprise? Once the trap is set and the bait is in, it is time to play the waiting game. The farmers come back to check on their traps regularly. Gotta make sure everything is running smooth and the hogs are falling for the bait. It is like a little dance between the farmers and the hogs, you know? Sneaky but effective. Now, let's talk numbers. According to the big shots at the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the hog population in North Carolina took a bit of a dip, about 20% less in 2023 compared to the previous year. And, and that's making progress right there. So, there you have it. North Carolina, where the hills are alive, with the sound of the hot traps snapping shut. It is a wild, wild world out there. But these farmers are keeping things in check. One trap at a time. Yeah. setting a ride of fire, swapping stories, and participating in North Carolina's hog hunting season is a wonderful experience. First of all, there are two main ways where you can participate with seasonal hunting and permit hunting. The seasonal hunt begins on October 1 and ends on December 31. During this time, you are free to pursue those wild boars with close-range hunting equipment, bows and arrows, or even as a good type of hunting tool. Now for those who want to hunt year-round, there is the option of licensed hunting. It is a year-long job, but you must have a state-issued hunting license, which costs $25 a year. It keeps things organized and ensures everything stays up to date. So picture this, farmers and hunters working together to solve this feral pig situation. Farmers give hunters detailed information about where these pigs congregate and you will learn from there. They're out there checking for signs of pigs, like tracks, droppings, and messy vegetation, and reporting back to the hunting team Going from fields to hills, our journey covers all types of terrains. We can hop on a bike or ATV to get to the plains. But when we can get to those hills, 
it is all about hiking or using some rugged mountain biking. While you're out there, a few things to keep in mind. Always check your gears before hitting the trail. Wear a helmet if you're hiking through hills. Watch your step and dense foliage theater and do not forget to bring some food and water. With around 200,000 pigs hunted each year, this hunting has had a real impact on wild boar populations. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, we're already seeing pig populations decline by about 20% by 2023. This isn't just about keeping a pig in a bag for fun. It makes our environment safer and keeps our roads cleaner. In addition, it puts more money in the pockets of people, especially our farmers. So there you have it, hog hunting in North Carolina, where it is more than just a sport. It is a community effort. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel right now and hit the like button and share this video with all of your friends so that you can watch it and enjoy it as well. Thank you and see you again. On June 20, 2022, a herd of feral hogs invaded a cornfield in Pasco, Florida. Wild boars have eaten all the corn plants, including the roots, making it impossible for the corn plants to recover. The farm owner, Mr. John Smith, said that the damage caused by the wild pigs amounted to more than $100,000. Mr. Smith said that this is the second time this year a herd of wild boars has invaded his cornfield. Mr. Smith has taken measures to protect his crops from wild boars, including fencing and using floodlights and sounds as well. However, these measures are not effective in these cases sometimes. Wild pigs can carry a variety of diseases including African swine fever referred to as ASF or foot and mouth disease referred to as FMD and brucellosis. African swine fever is an acute infectious disease caused by a virus that can spread to domestic pigs and wild boars. ASF disease has a high survival rate up to 100%. ASF is a serious threat to the pig industry worldwide. These diseases can spread to livestock and humans, causing economic and health losses. The Wire Mesh Fences Constructed of galvanized wire mesh approximately 6 feet high, have proven effective in deterring feral hogs from causing agricultural damage. The posts are about 8 feet tall, made from wood or metal, and provide support to ensure the strength and stability of the fence. The steel mesh is fixed to the support tree with nails or bolts. Creating a strong resistance system, Florida farmers can install fences themselves or hire professional companies to do the job. In the case of self-installation, it is important to ensure that the fence is set up properly for optimal performance. According to the latest report from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, as of December 2023, farmers in the state of Florida have constructed wire mesh fences around about 1.5 million acres of farmland, including farmland, small camps, and large fields.
With an estimated construction cost of about $2 billion, the effort marks a major step forward in protecting crops and livestock from feral hog infestations. The drive and hunting at night is an effective feral hog hunting method favored by Florida farmers, especially when feral hogs become active in the evening. Groups of hunters often travel in trucks or SUVs, fully equipped with tools and equipment necessary for hunting. By using headlights, hunters have the ability to detect wild boars in the dark, creating favorable conditions for hunting. When the group sees the target, the hunter will deploy shooting techniques to ensure efficiency and accuracy. This practice has yielded positive results with the United States Department of Agriculture reporting that every year, Florida farmers successfully kill approximately 250,000 feral hogs thanks to this hunting method. Before starting the hunt, hunters often prepare a series of necessary equipment, hunting tools with radiators, are an important and indispensable item. Hunters need to make sure all their equipment is working properly to avoid unwanted problems during hunting. The first step in hunting is searching using diffuser lights. Hunters investigate fields in the dark to detect the location of wild boars. Pigs are often active at night to search for food, creating favorable conditions for hunting. Once the location of the wild boars has been determined, the hunter will proceed to the hunting step. Using hunting tools, they were careful to ensure accuracy and efficiency. People participating in this activity are often professional farmers or experienced hunters. The hunting process is carried out in close steps to ensure performance and safety. According to estimates by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, about 200,000 feral hogs are killed each year thanks to the night hunting in Florida. Hunting wild boars at night is not only a form of entertainment, but also an effective way to control wild boars' populations. However, to ensure the success and safety of the hunt, hunters need to follow some important rules. Safety is always the top priority here, not only for yourself, but also for those around you. The use of hunting equipment should be done carefully and properly, avoiding unnecessary danger. Additionally, compliance with local laws is important to avoid unwanted legal issues. Hunters must also pay attention to their surroundings, limit negative impacts on nature, and avoid polluting or destroying the environment. So how do Texas farmers destroy wild boars at night? Let's continue watching the rest of the video to know exactly how.
So since these solutions have been affecting and preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.